three, two, one, zero, ignition. Ah! Lift off. Avatar 5 ah! is left. Hey, I'm Pete. These are my brothers. They're opening a brewery, and I make films, and we thought it'd be kind of a cool idea to document these guys as their brewery gets built and everything that goes in between. David, Richard. Cheers. Hello. Boy, that was terrible to do that again. Didn't sound natural. Hey, I'm Peter. These are my brothers, Richard and David. Hold on, hold on. Tell me your whole name. Hey, I'm Peter Hartogs. I'm gonna run out of beer. <laughs> I love beer. It's been a big part of my life, and I said, why not make it my life? So. I got this harebrained idea to leave the cubicle and try to start my own business and open up a brewery and uh, got the wife's approval. How the hell did you get her approval? <laughs> That's that funny. alone took a year. <laughs> <laughs> I took Richard on as my business partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I some, the beer went up into my nose and it down. And <laughs> Eventually I get a call saying that We've been approved for about a million dollars in loan. And they're like, why aren't you excited? I'm like, it's a personal guaranteed million dollars. And not only do we have our investors money on the line, we have our, our livelihood on the line. We have our house, we have uh, our income. We have two kids at home. Uh, so it's kind of like, oh, f we're really doing this. We have 90 days to execute the loan which means that we have 90 days to sign a lease. So now the clock is ticking and we have real money on the line. I tell people, well, we're not in the beer business right now. We're in the business of opening a business. It's fun to think about all the uh, beer names and the creative stuff we're gonna do. And oh, we're gonna have this in the tap room and we're gonna do the barrel aging and so, we try to put that on the back burner. Three, two, one, zero ignition. Ah! Lift off of Avatar 5 ah! with left. We're gonna go look at some uh, properties right now. We've had a lot of ups and downs in the last 18 months since I've joined in. Uh, right now we're on a really good upswing and we wanna keep the momentum going. The hardest part is now signing a lease and get brewing. So this is the resting location that we really like. It's a 7,500 square feet. Uh, this building actually wasn't sold, but all the other buildings were. So uh, we had to back away. Onward to the next building. <laughs> when you're looking at a building, you have to get all the information. What's the water line coming in? What's the height of the building? What's just everything. And if you're gonna be opening a brewery, you better brush up on your zoning requirements. So we're at the Sterling location that we have a uh, we have a counter proposal out uh, brokers representing this warehouse. So I can only show you the outside of it now. But David was worried that a bigger place means more construction costs, and our contractor said it's not the size, but what you do. Which you know you like to tell the women that too, <laughs> uh, but I digress. When you build your house, you don't you know build the bedroom and your rock star kitchen or your jacuzzi efforts. You put the foundation down. And I guess that's what we're doing now. My name is Wes McCann. I'm the brewer for Rocket Frog Brewing Company hosted by Richard and David Hartogs. We won 12 different draft lines, so that's five continuous taps in there. They actually were very, uh, very far along in their vision. They knew what they wanted, they knew what they were doing. Um, obviously, with Richard's background and the things that he's done in the beer world, he's very well connected. Better beer, it's over Better beer. And they realize that the world of beer is not just the latest, greatest IPA either. The problem we had with pumpkins is, as you know, last year and the year before, the market got glutted. Yeah. Everybody made an orange beer and threw a bunch of nutmeg and cinnamon in it. It tasted like shit, most of them. Being different these days is, is getting more and more difficult, but I think we need to try to be as different as we can and still make great beer. Um, I've opened up a few breweries in my time. Everything's a learning experience and everything's a, an opportunity. I want to start something 
that not only can be around for a good 15, 20 years or longer, but something that when I'm done, I can either pass along to my kids or pass along to their kids. Well, hey. the two of them. Hey, uh. <laughs> um, but something that, you know, something that's gonna stand the test of time. Yes. <laughs> you guys are um, it's getting a crunch time, aren't you? Yep. What, six, seven, seven weeks till we'd have to lose the loan and reapply for it. I'm not losing hope. Are you desperate? Soon. What am I not desperate? <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, zero, ignition, lift off, Avatar 5 is left. We were looking at this another beautiful 10,000 square foot building in Sterling and 22 foot ceilings. It would have been perfect right by the bike path and things were going great and then they came back to us and said, well, Someone rented that 10,000 square feet and the 25,000 square feet next to you. So we're competing against big companies who want to come in and buy these shell buildings that are perfect for a brewery and just put nothing but server farms in there. We were looking at this building because that warehouse that I like got scooped up by another company. Some good opportunity here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you've got gas, I mean, we've talked about that before. Right. And that really helps you. Traditionally, what I've seen mm -hmm. is the business plan, is underfunded to do what you want to do. By the time you get done with dealing with the brewery operation and getting into the space, the tap room all of a sudden is, you know, exposed drywall, plastic laminate counters. Plastic um, cups. So, hey, nothing wrong with a plastic cup, right? Right. You just gotta label it, right? <laughs> Sharpie. I just got the lease um, from, the, uh, from the landlords. Like there's 28 sections, <laughs> exhibits A through E. We can sign this right now without even reading it and get the place. Assuming there's no bullshit in this, we should be signing this by uh, tomorrow night or day after. Mon or Monday or Tuesday at the very latest. Yeah. You know, when paragraphs start with the word notwithstanding, you've got a lot of reading to go through. <laughs> So what's up with the lease? So the uh, lease is now in the lawyer's hands. There's some pretty shocking uh, developments in the lease that were not negotiated that um, we absolutely cannot have. They'll be deal breakers. Construction coordination fee where they basically take all of our construction and they want 10% of that. They also want permitting fees. So we're, we're paying our architect to get all the permits. They want 15% off the top. They can move us with 30 days notice. The banks have a personal guarantee on my loan and now the landlords want another personal guarantee. We're gonna red light the out of it. Loan deadlines, though, is yeah, 10 days. Otherwise, we're back to square one for luck. Where are you now? You got this one place. Is there anything else in the pipeline? No, not, not right now. We can't sign uh, anything out of desperation. No. I mean, the two brokers are going back and forth saying, let's get it done, let's get it done. And then we gets to us and we're like, hold your horses. I feel like they're taking a the cattle prod to our backside. <laughs> What's the brand say? Cash up front. <laughs> Cash up front when I'm banging. Something like that. Yeah, but it's as funny as it is, it's. That sucks. I mean, all we want to do is brew beer. We want to get a place, throw in a brew house, brew some. Just say it. <laughs> brew some beer. Next time, Mission Impossible. And I kind of got to look pretty on the camera. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and check us out next week for a new episode. Previously on Rocket Frog, launch of a brewery. I want to start something that not only can be around for a good 15, 20 years or longer, but something that when I'm done, I can either pass along to my kids or pass along to their kids. There's some pretty shocking uh, developments in the lease that were not negotiated that um, we absolutely cannot have. It'll be deal breakers. After the debacle with the lease, uh, and we fired our brokers and hired new real estate brokers, we can't afford to keep paying our brewer his salary while we're waiting for stuff to happen. So today, uh, we unfortunately had to 
uh, relieve our brewer of his, of his duties, which was pretty tough. Yeah. Another reason why we decided to cut back on uh, our brewer is in the event we do have to fold, we could give our uh, investors their full money back, but Dave and I will take a pretty significant financial hit on that. You're an investor. Like, you no, I mean, no, because... Well, he just told him right now he's at a place where he gets all his money back. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... I'll show you the have, you seen my, have you seen my new car? <laughs> <laughs> we decided to not even stop working on a logo, stop working on branding and stuff, just because it, be, it will be a waste of time unless we... When was, last, when was the last time we even talked about the tasting room? Like the yeah. best part of this. Do you know how cool it is to say that my brothers are starting a brewery in Northern Virginia? Really? Where? When? 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 I'm like, I don't know. It's do you proceed that with saying, would you like to be an investor? No, I do that after. Okay. But I now I have tape. <laughs> <laughs> I have to document. It's not like we're wasting our time. Pretty on the camera. There is no f hope of that. None of us. You're an you're a beer researcher. I mean, that's what you do. So it's fine. I'm attractive on the inside. As you know, we have had trouble finding the right spot for us. We're not looking for the perfect place, but we are looking for a place that will work. So we're showing all the places that didn't work for one reason or another. Either we rejected it or our heath was rejected or other variables happened. Enjoy the tour. Hi, we're in this nondescript business park. Somebody swooped in and not only took the 11,000 square feet that we wanted, they took the additional available 15,000 square feet. The rent was a lot higher than I felt it should have been. There's actually some earthquake damage in the back. Uh, the parking situation pretty much sucks. The uh, landlord wanted to keep us in limbo because they wanted to sell and thought having a brewery in there may be a good idea to sell us. So we just walked away from it. The landlords rejected our use. A lot more expensive per square foot than we wanted to spend. I really liked it. Um, we never heard back from the landlords. We, most likely would have ended up having to put an elevator in there, which would have cost a lot of money. The leasing company that owns this building and a whole load of others insisted that they had to be the contractor and architect and all that. We're in Stony Virginia on Glen Drive. This place is a little smaller than what we were looking for, but everything else checked our boxes. It has a good location in Loudoun County, good ownership, the lease is really solid. Welcome to Rocket Farm. Tour's over. Welcome to Rocket Frog. Welcome to Rocket Frog. Welcome to Rocket Frog, bitches. Three, two, one, zero ignition. Lift off. Amazon Five is back. Well, after four years, we're finally signing a lease. This feels kind of surreal and not real at the same time. From here on out, it's uh, it's. Going from planning a brewery to building a brewery, and it's going to be pretty awesome. Tomorrow we're putting our deposit down for our brew house system, so I'll be sending about $175,000 to the company. That's going to sting. Uh, Friday we take possession of a forklift. Do either of you know how to drive a forklift? No. no. Hey guys. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi, I'm Jen. Nice to meet you. This is the money part. This is always the important part. That's a lot of paper. It is. <laughs> it's it a lot of money. Like, same document you signed before. Don't lose our house. The same thick but small limited liability company. Same statement concerning lobbying. The real reason they just want you to keep signing. <laughs> and signing. And signing. <laughs> <laughs> Push. We just executed the loan from m and Bank, and uh, it's time to celebrate. We just quadrupled our debt. Uh, is that why you're so pale? <laughs> <laughs> well, that just happened. Call camera. You're very bubbly. <laughs> Wow. Uh, you call it bubble? Uh, it's a little effervescent. <laughs> okay, effervescent. You should probably stick to beer. Oh, hello. Uh, today's an exciting day for Rocket Frog. Uh, our, our oldest brother Mike is in town from San Diego. 
It's his first time seeing where his investment money is going. Even though the demo hasn't begun, he'll be able to get an idea of what's going to happen here. I think it's cool. I'm excited. Um, I'd seen some pictures, but I didn't quite get the layout from the pictures. And now seeing the space, I have a much better uh, sense of the erection process that's going to uh, be taken forward. Whatever it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Richard is making uh, profane. Can you turn that? And... No, he's running away. I understand there's a few other breweries around here. And the one thing I've seen in San Diego is you don't want to be like the only guy around because if you've got a cluster of breweries, you know, people will come out and they'll do a little brewery tour. Or, uh, <laughs> sorry, I tried. I, I still need to see a map to know where we are because I have no clue where we are. We're in Sterling, Virginia. 2256 Oak Glen Drive, so unit 103. The sprinkler's in place already. That saves a lot of money. And the ceiling, like all this is going to have to go. Dry storage grain here. The brew house will probably be here. Grain will get milled here. Fermentation will probably go back here and loop around into here. Honestly, I try to make the whole box as big as you can. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, every bird says as big as your cold box is, you, you need it bigger. But I'm looking forward to it, and uh, especially the gluten free beer that they're going to Gluten sensitive beer that they're going to make, because I'll be here very often. <laughs> gluten reduced. You heard it here first. Gluten reduced. I just got delivery of this forklift from Winchester Equipment Company. Um, I've never driven a forklift before. Uh, Tyler, uh, the guy there, he, he gave me the rundown on it, so. I'm pretty confident I'm an expert now. Safety first, baby. Oh. This thing does not have airbags. I feel like it's skidding around. Wait, which one's the brake? Oh. I'm so clueless, man. <laughs> Mike, I think you should stand on the forklift and see how long it takes me to uh, buck you off. What happened? Something just turned off. I don't know what the hell that means. That's it for now. In our next episode, you'll meet Rocket Frog's new brewer. Don't forget to tune in, comment, like, and subscribe. And once you do, you'll get to see how his test batch turned out. But you won't get to taste it, because we haven't tasted any of his f***ing beer yet. Actually, the sour was really good. Three, two, one, zero, ignition. <laughs> Lift off. Avatar 5 with left. I'd like to introduce Russell Carpenter, head brewer of Rocket Frog. Today we're at the brewery doing a test batch of Rocket Frog's hopeful flagship IPA. For this one, uh, I want a load of citrus, kind of a piney bitterness, not overpowering uh, the grapefruit tangerine uh, citrus with a little bit of uh, mango. We're having an event with some of our investors in about a month also and kind of give them a sample of what to look forward to. Being a home brewer at heart, I love to experiment with anything and everything, fruits, spices, different hops, different yeast. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I guess there's nothing about me that screams he's gonna make the best beer possible, but having a PhD, you think a little bit differently. If this experiment doesn't work, why did it not work? What do I need to change to make it work? And so taking that same approach to anything, beer making, cheese making, cooking, whatever. Do you make um, cheese? mowing the lawn. Uh, yes, I can. I have. <laughs> um, David's not here, but he cuts the cheese a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, they are, they are twins, so it's probably... I, I didn't get that same. <laughs> No, we're 97% identical. I didn't get that. <laughs> Richard and David and I have similar views on the styles of beer that we like, um, and I think it's a great fit. We'll have beer in three weeks, for sure. Rock up Frog's second, <laughs> second official first test batch. <laughs> something like that. Uh, yeah.
Are you happy with it? Yeah, I am. I am. What would you change about the profile right now? Uh, I think we're going for our <laughs> flagship uh, lower ABV. Pretty fantastic. I mean, a little bit stronger than what I expected, but uh, I mean, the flavor's there, the, the bitterness is there, uh, the color is perfect. So, yeah, it's a good start. <laughs> it's a total family show. That's right. Your daddy is number one. <laughs> So as you can see, construction has finally started. Pretty excited. Probably the most exciting day since getting the loan. You're Signing giddy. the lease, getting the loan. What's that? You're giddy. I am. It's the first time something's really happening, other than like bureaucratic bull****. Within four days, this is just going to be gutted. And then they'll start the concrete then also. And when they cut it, that's the stuff they have to do after hours from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. Because it's just so loud. Yeah. Once we told the contractor that last week, it's like, yeah, that was how I was worried about. We have to do overtime payment. F how much is that going to be? We're zoned to do what we want to do here, but then there's an actual site plan zone, and that's basically having us as a manufacturer with the tasting room, there's two different uses. It all stands for parking spots. They said we have to apply for a spam. It's a site plan amendment. So we had to hire a civil engineer to do this. Needless to say, the contingency component of your budget has been, uh, yeah. has been duly used. Yeah, everyone says it happened, you know? And as it's happening, it's, it's still bullshit to me. Like, it, I'm not surprised, it's, I'm more annoyed. I'm really annoyed by it. There's a lot more to come here, though. This is pretty cool. This is step one. I'm gonna leave you hanging. Yeah. We got we have a great piece of history, of craft beer history coming into this place. I wish we had a beer so when they reveal the first logo, <laughs> it's becoming a theme. Can you hear us? I can now. Okay, cool. We are here. You are here. We are here too. The goal of this presentation is to give you a really wide range of different directions and, uh, and concepts. In this first direction, we uh, created sort of a story about a, a space program in which a frog is going to space. I had a chuckle when he said sending a, a frog to space, it just sounds kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> this one was definitely inspired by conversations we've had in earlier calls where, you know, what I like to think whatever did happen to that frog, let's not think that he died, but let's actually think that he's off doing fun, crazy things. So it's kind of like the most interesting frog in the world. <laughs> yes, exactly. In direction C, pushing that a little bit further into uh, like a comic booky um, style. D, we're going even more um, wild in a like really fun, funky, um, but still like it could go very modern show poster style. I'm, I'm seeing the mystery machine from uh, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> in direction E, getting a little bit more literal, but um, starting to get a little bit more modern. The frog head rocketing into space type, really picking up on these uh, like flat graphics. Direction F, we wanted to go in a more graphic, but minimalist line work style. It almost uh, looks a little bit like a hop tone outline. Exactly. Yeah, and then in Direction G, this is a very restrained, but could has a little bit of a fun poppiness. Do you have any thoughts? I'm thinking. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. When you look at them all together, they all look so different. Kind of like the frog dude on the uh, number A. He looks like he's in a happy place. He looks like a curious little fellow. Of these, B jumps out the most. I kind of like to see what a, a frog would look like in that same style too. The, the frog does look like he's had a couple drinks. Not, not enough to make him a jerk, just enough to make him happy. I kind of just want to grab a can. And... It's four o'clock, nothing's stopping me. Nothing was stopping me at three o'clock. That's true. This first direction, we've sort of find a few elements from uh, 
uh, some of the directions that you guys were leaning towards. Referencing more of a Virginia-style frog, and then a lot of character to the frog itself. He's a little bit lumpy, he's a little bit bumpy, but he's still uh, very, like, aspirational. Okay. We'll, we'll, um, we'll then... name him Richard. Huh? We'll name it Richard. <laughs> Jackass. This concept is much more happy. This is from pulling from a cult classic direction. You guys really like this type. Mm -hmm. And we've updated the frog to be much more where he's he's maybe having a little fun, maybe is a little scared. I feel like that alligator is going to eat the frog. This direction is taking from the Pulp Fiction direction, and we've just given it a lot of depth. We've also included a tiny little frog that's uh, jutting out into the hours outer space. This is a new direction. We wanted to give you something that was a little bit more literal and definitely had more level of seriousness to it. I like a lot of a lot of the elements on there. It's it's almost overwhelming because they're all, it, it's so cool to see like the different treatments like put into action. I like how the, the branding works well in the first one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, neat to see these in the color palette. It's, yeah. um, it's starting to feel real to you guys, right? It is. It, you, you know, you see it in a real application. When you're flipping through this and you're looking at the different visuals, what's the thing that's jumping out that you're like, I want that t-shirt or I want that on a t-shirt? This is, okay. yeah, this is uh, Alice. R.I.P. will be called Angry Alice. Mm. We're gonna name one after Eleanor too. Enra enraged Eleanor. Enraged Eleanor? I thought it was Helenor. Mm. Oh, Helenor. Helenor. That's right. It'll be a Hellas box. So basically, Mama. You're, you're, you're a real good dad. <laughs> I have a lot of patience. <laughs> It's family day at Rocket Frog. We brought the uh, cousins from New York. My wife, Cassie, the boys are here showing everybody what's going on. Andrew's infant, Levi, is here. Hey, do you need the bathroom, Nora? We'll just turn the other way. There's a bathroom outside. Right now, we're in the tasting room. Tasting room will go to about right here is where you'll be. Uh, probably a little further up. A little further up? Yeah. So you'll be, you'll be right here drinking your beer at the bar. Actually, the bar will probably be about here. So, about here. So two feet further. This is for brew house. This is going to be reinforced concrete because this is where the um, heavy um, brew house and brew kettle and stuff and the fermenters. So they had to cut this down to reinforce it. The ceilings might look high to you, but they're ideally I would have had a building that had um, two more feet of clearance up there because then you get bigger tanks because when you're expanding, uh, height is almost as, it's probably more important than width when you're coming into brew tanks. So we're putting 30 barrels in here. We'll probably be able to fit some 45 barrel fermenters. And then we're actually getting a 15 barrel fermenter to do less popular beers, um, like a sour beer. I want to give you an update on where we're at right now. And that's all I have to say about that. So as you can see, the tile has, was laid yesterday. That's where the brew house is gonna go. And today they're putting the grout on and that should rest for 72 hours and then we'll be ready to take in our equipment, which comes in about two weeks from today, I think. Pretty exciting day here at Rocket Frog Brewing Company. Uh, the equipment is coming. The first truck's being unloaded now. Like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so what do you wanna do, Scott? Are you just gonna pull it off a little bit or? The goal here is to get nowhere close to an accident. My standard line that I tell everybody is, while we're doing this, I want to be bored. I'm going to be bored all day. If my heart rate goes up, we're having a bad day. So we're going to go slow, we're going to take our time, and we're all going to be bored all day, and we're going to go home with all our fingers on our toes, and that's pretty much what we want to do. <laughs> Half-inch little lip that's nah, it's up. Yeah. It's just a piece of metal. Oh. Sweet to see this when, when, when you have several hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment coming in, you want to be here for that. 
Now, can you do that and look at the mic at the camera at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to actually, I think this is actually the, the way it actually goes. Yep. Like this? Exactly like this. All right, where do we go with this? Coming through. Beep, beep. Got a little bit looks awesome up there. You want to drag this one in place? Sure. Oh, your buddy's there, no, but you, you got it. Sweet. Just once he, once he sets it. Somebody wants me to drag this. <laughs> I don't know why. All right, so the lid needs to be on that side. Just for the record, I... Isn't that the original drawing? That's an original crotch rocket. No. I'm playing uh, a real life Tetris, and so. With a lot of money's worth of equipment? Yes, with a lot of money's worth of equipment. Hold on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I don't know if they're actually recording everything I say. Hopefully not. I feel like I'm an inch away from doing something I shouldn't be with this. Did you make that bar, Scott? No. It's so, sim <laughs> so simple and so right, useful. Physics, man. Yeah. We'll go slow. You see something you don't like, say something. Cue the dramatic music. Down we go. Is that what he wanted? That, was, that worked exactly as planned. Uh -huh. Well, now I know what to expect, so next time I'm not gonna be, I'm, next time I'm not gonna have in my pants, so it's fine. I did bring some extra pants, so it's fine. One down, what, six to go? Actually, one up. So this one's gonna be much heavier than the last one. <laughs> Rock on. So that's how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. So that other take was no good. This one, this one's a go. This one's good. Someone was talking with somebody. He's like, man, you must be excited. All that fighting you did just to get the spot. And then you see all this to come in. And you're like, you're f right. It's like, you know, you got to fight for what you want. What you really want. And uh, that's what we really wanted. And just seeing it all come in seeing all these people working on our project is really, is really satisfying. This is the big exciting part because it goes from empty to all of these tanks. And then, uh, but you know, there's still a lot of important work that still has to be done after this. So. Next time, issues start to mount and Richard lays down the gauntlet. At the rate that the production crew is going, this will probably be airing in maybe two years. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and check us out next week. Hey, it's Richard here. Uh, we haven't updated you guys in a while, so we're about five to six weeks from opening, hopefully. So I wanted to uh, show you what's going on and what needs to be done to uh, get the brewery open. Oh, you want another one? I, I, I'm terrible at the second take. Yeah, I know. That's why I only do one. Hi, everybody. <laughs>
Um, I'd be very surprised. At the, at the rate that the production crew is going, this will probably be airing in maybe two years. If you look up, they're putting the light fixtures on. I think that's Sputnik. Not a scale model. It probably doesn't even look like Sputnik. Hey, welcome to our dead body storage. I mean, uh, this is our cold, our cold room. It's 600 square feet. Russell's did a fantastic job putting together. Russell is getting pretty stressed out. He, he's the one who has a lot of work to do. Uh, about three weeks ago, we had all of our tanks delivered. And so now the uh, arduous process of actually lining these tanks up, putting in all the hard piping, it's like a giant puzzle. Uh, it'll take maybe about a week to do that, jockeying stuff here and there, moving things half an inch, quarter of an inch, even <laughs> smaller amounts, an eighth, a sixteenth. Uh, to kind of get the piping right. Once I get all this in place, that'll be the worst part of the waiting game because everything will be in place, I'll be ready to go, but we have to get steam, steam piping done from the steam boiler, we need the water piping done for the, from the water filters, we need the auger installed, the glycol uh, chiller. Excited but nervous? <laughs> uh, yeah, terrified actually. <laughs> terrified but nervous. <laughs> you know, it's a, lot, it's a lot of money in this room. Uh, uh, the amount of money going into a beer kind of pales in comparison to the amount of money in this room right now, but the amount of money you can lose by making subpar beer in this market is astronomical. If you come out straight off the gate with something that's not very good, or, it, I mean, it just does, it doesn't wow anybody at all, then you might struggle a little bit. So that's what we're going to try to do, just straight out of the gate, just do make the best beer we can. Real life bull <laughs> Jeff's gonna be <laughs> full. If those f***ing plumbers took it, I'm gonna be f***ing angry. You getting all this? <laughs> <laughs> we are at Rocket Frog Brewing Company. Everything's set up and in place. This is the hot liquor tank, so our, our, our boiler, our steam boiler, is in that room right there. Um, so that will create the steam, which is then uh, goes through the jackets of the boiler to heat up the water. This white pipe right here is where the grain gets augered up all the way up to the grist case. Uh, there's a slide gate up there, so we let the grain fall into the mash tun while we're pumping in our hot water. Malted barley has certain enzymes called alpha and beta amylase that will break down the starches in the grains. And so they only work within a certain temperature range. Um, so what we'll do is we'll get it between 150 degrees and 160, 162 or so, and depending on the style of beer. So we transfer from the mash tun to the boil kettle. There's three jackets on here, three steam jackets for boiling. This will be where all the, where the hops go in. So once we get it up to boil, we'll toss our hops in. Once we're finished with the boil, we pump it uh, from the boil kettle to the Whirlpool vessel. And Whirlpool has these two tangential ports that go in, and what we're doing is we're pumping it from here and comes in at a tangent, so it spins, so it creates a whirlpool. Your bittering hops go in here, and let's say we get about 10 or 15 IBUs for an IPA from bittering hops in here. Once we pump it into here, it's still gonna be 200 and something degrees, um, and so we'll add, like for a big IPA, we'll add a ton of hops in here, maybe like 40 pounds, um, and those will just impart more of the flavor and aroma, less of the bitterness. Some people call it hop bursting when you add a lot of hops in the whirlpool. When are you gonna put the durian in? What? The durian fruit. The durian fruit? Yeah. We're doing an interview here. I know. Once we let everything settle, it'll go this way, and this goes through this heat exchanger. Essentially, this is just a, pretty much like a radiator. So each, there's a bunch of plates in here, and so on one side of the plate you'll have the hot wort coming from the kettle, and the other side, in the opposite direction, you have either cold water, uh, cold filtered water, or glycol. We can use both on this. After the heat exchanger, uh, we've chilled our wort uh, down to, should be around you know, 66, 68 for uh, ales or 50 degrees for a lager coming out of here. We'll hook up a 15 foot hose or so, and it'll go straight into the bottom here. There's a port up at the top. Uh, where we can add yeast. And this is our smaller fermenter, so this is a single turn of the brew house, 15 barrels. Uh, these are 30 barrel fermenters, so we have four of those. And those 
Eventually we'll do double batch, double brew days, uh, but probably these first five or six beers are just gonna be single batches and all these fermenters because you kind of don't know what to expect sometimes and different styles of beer we're gonna try to make and you know, don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> 30 barrels of beer, it's a lot to dump down the drain. 15 is not as much. Once fermentation is finished, uh, we can drop the temperature and let the yeast settle. Uh, get it down to about 33 degrees or so, 34 degrees. Then they'll be transferred into a clean and sanitized bright tank. So we have a carbonation stone right here. Uh, it sticks the big one about that long. The carbonation port, uh, stone part's that long, but it sticks almost halfway into the uh, bright tank. So this is our brew house uh, control panel. We're having an issue with fuses for the Whirlpool pump are blowing. So yeah, trying to get this resolved and then the boiler as well, trying to figure out you know, why it's not turning on. I'm hoping to brew on Wednesday, but if we don't get this fixed, then yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen. It's very frustrating because everything's in place and everything's ready to go and we really, really need to get brewing and you know, get things underway because we've kind of been delayed here and there with other, other issues that haven't been our fault. And, um, but yeah, it is what it is. So you just kind of go with it. You can't really be upset all the time about these things. <laughs> if you are, you pull your hair out every day. So. Yeah, you got some left. Although yeah, I got it's some. It's probably a little bit grayer. It's getting more and more, this. more and more gray every every day. I think. Hi, this is Richard from Rocket Frog Brewing Company. We are now a fully operational brewery. Here's our brew house. Okay, and here's how it came to be. Did you like the fake smile I had on? Yes, like, Nice toothy smile. Construction is finally finished. <laughs> I know. Hi, this is Richard from Rocket Frog Brewing Company. We are now a fully functioning brew house. Oh. I'll just have my head in here.
smells so good. There's nothing in there. Shut up. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome to Rocket Frog Brewing Company. Today's an awesome day. We're finally brewing our first batch of beer, an American Blonde Ale. It's been a long time coming and my uh, thirst is about to be quenched with beer. We're probably warped by now, but you know, beer in a few weeks. Three, two, one, zero ignition. Ah! Lift off of Avatar 5 ah! with left. Let's rock and roll. The gold medal is called Minotaur 5. This is named after the rocket that blasted the frog off launch pad. I'm terrified, but <laughs> it's fine. Finally doing it, man. What we're doing right now is just laying down a base of water. Once we actually lay down this base, we'll start putting the grain in. The grain drops in and kind of gets prehydrated as it's falling in. And we have what's called lauder rakes that'll kind of mix and make sure everything's wet. Any dry grain is there in there is a loss of that potential, the starches in the grain to be turned into sugars. So you want to get, make sure everything's mixed homogeneously. We're good. I preheated with boiling. I got 11 right. degrees on average, so. Rock on. Ah, smell of the brewery. Working brewery. Take, take some bets on how many of these pens we have in a week. Our secrets. Secrets, secrets. No, I don't care, man. <laughs> Try and recreate it. You're gonna have to just follow me around. <laughs> I see work. Yep. And so now what we're doing is recirculating. And so this is coming out of the bottom of the tank here and coming into here. This is essentially to clarify the work. We're just pulling all the liquid off from the bottom and putting it on top. Because there are some bits and pieces that get through the bottom. First wort. Try some. Cheers. Ready. Ready. It's good. It's grainy. It'll actually change over the next like 20 minutes or so. Oh, it's much better now. I'm gonna need sparge water in a minute. Sparging is pretty much rinsing the grain with water. Because if you just took all this liquid and put it in here, you wouldn't have enough for a full batch because the grain is gonna absorb a lot of the water. Plus, you'll leave a bunch of sugars behind if you don't rinse the grains. Oh, isn't that a beautiful thing? So what this does is just a tube with water, and it's cold water, so it'll chill this sample down pretty quick. These will float in there and tell us the sugar content in Play-Doh, which is a measurement of dissolved sugars, essentially. 10, 6, 10, 7, 6, 7 right now. That was fucking boiling before, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was boiling. Jeez. Brew day is uneventful so far, but we're not done yet. There can always be explosions and catastrophic pump failures and lots of cursing. I'm confused as why this isn't working. This is gonna be fun getting this out. I need a hoe, not that kind of hoe. Uh, we have a farmer coming in at one o'clock, 1.30 to pick up all the grain. Most farmers will use it as a supplement feed. And in the winter, it's particularly good for them because the animals don't always drink enough water like they should. And this grain, they feed it to them wet. 
uh, when they bring it in fresh and uh, it helps them keep them hydrated. Okay, I got beer. Switching. Transfer 310, yep. Yeah, we're done. Well, almost. Yeah, now it's the fermentation process. That's not our job, that's the yeast job. Once the yeast starts working, it'll start becoming beer. Yeah, everything's pretty smooth. A couple of hiccups here and there, and probably took a bit longer than it should, but I'm overall happy. It's uh, the culmination of a lot of hard work, and you know, it's about time. It's about time we got to do something. <laughs> How you doing, guys? Richard here. Welcome to our tasting room. It's almost complete. The bar is near finish, and we're really happy with the bar. From here over to here, this about six foot section is the original dogfish head bar, which you can see a little off coloring. And then if you uh, come over onto this side of the bar, the, these panels right here are also from the original dogfish head bar. I think it looks awesome. So over here, these are our awesome drink rails. This is an awesome piece of wood. The initial wood that I got was not so good. I learned a very valuable lesson there. Let the carpenters pick the wood. Also, I'd like to introduce our tasting room manager. This is Matt Forain. Say hi, Matt. How you guys doing? Matt, you want to tell them about your long lineage from uh, Dutch aristocracy? <laughs> I reached out about the position and then researched about Rocket Frog and found the videos. And uh, which is, I think it's, it's really cool to get a behind the scenes look as far as building a brewery. I felt very comfortable and felt like I really work for these guys and do a great job. Fill in some samples. Of? Of Angry Alice. Which is? Do I have to tell you everything to say? Yeah, yeah, I, got, I need cues for everything. This is the first iteration of our flagship IPA, Angry Alice. Um, I mean, we'll see if it needs adjusting here and there over the next few batches. Not bad. <laughs> I think it's pretty, pretty good for the second batch. You like it? Yeah. I do like it. <laughs> How many days in the bright, you said? Cheers. One day in the bright, not even 24 hours. Oh. Actually, it's not good. Six, 16, 16 hours, maybe? It's easy drinking. Are you happy with it? Yeah. There's always room for improvement. What tweaks <laughs> would you make just after the first couple uh, of sips? More hops. What are you guys happy? Yeah. Good. Oh yeah. oh yeah. For five years, I finally drank the juice is free. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not free. It's, not free. it's, it's not a million juicy. dollar. It's a million dollar taster. Oh, no. the juice is liberated. <laughs> Thank you. You now all of a sudden look like you're full tasting. I know. One of the things we're doing here at Rocket Frog is we're going to have uh, rotating artists on a irregular basis come in. It's a place where they can sell their art directly through the artist. You go to these art events. It's all about like sticking your pinky out and eating finger food and drinking wine, so why not do craft beer and wings or whatever? <laughs> Needs a little more juice to like 12. Getting tired of people asking, when are you opening? When are you opening? It's like, shut the f up. So you guys hadn't really tested the taps before, have you? Not really. We did, but we didn't. <laughs> Probably need a little more. I think the bitterness is, I think it'd be more it will definitely be more perceived bitterness if, it, if the carbonation was higher. I'm zesting blood oranges. And why are you doing this? We're going to keg off uh, some of the IPA and add uh, Angry Alice and have a blood orange version called Blood Angry Alice. <laughs> I can't tell if I'm bleeding or this is just a blood orange. A lot of people supported us throughout the way and a lot of people are really excited for us. So I'm excited to, for them to come in here and just kind of see what we did because I'm really Really proud of everything we've done, and the the brewery is like phenomenal. It's it, it's beyond my dreams, and I think I think people are going to be really excited and really really impressed with it. In our next episode, I just opened a brewery. I'm going to Disney World. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and check us out next week. Previously on Rocket Frog, launch of a brewery. Getting tired of people asking, "When are you opening? When are you opening?" It's like, shut the fuck up. I'm um, greet the customers, check in the uh, He's like the Walmart greeter for Rocket Frog. Yeah. I'm practicing for my next career. What Pandora station should I play? 
people are asking me, and sure, you know, when are you opening it's old, but it's because they're really interested in what we're doing and excited for us. I'm curious to see who the first one through the door is, though. So. Bye. Our very first customer. It's so cool to see this place pack of people. If uh, anybody wants to do a tour, uh, Russell's gonna take some people around back there. I think we really lucked out uh, getting Russell when we did. If we had uh, signed uh, on the dotted line for a different building years ago, I don't know if Russell would have ever crossed our path. And I think it was a godsend, frankly, that uh, we lucked onto him. Ooh, cold. Yeah! Looking good. I like seeing it occupied and people enjoying beer. What's your favorite beer name? Is it Angry Alice? Alice is a little angry about the fact that the beer is named Angry Alice, which is fitting. A little partial to the, uh, to the Angry Alice. Uh, it's a marvelous IPA, the blonde, right now. The uh, Minotaur 5, I really like. It's a um, pretty big accomplishment to have finally got into this point after five years. So, a little surreal still, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of bumps in the road, but pretty exciting. I'll take bumps. I don't want like mountains to climb over anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure I thought this through. Didn't really expect to have to be a uh, have to be solo parenting with these two most weekends. Oh, but well, once we'll they're... be out. We'll be out here a lot at the brewery. The girls will grow up here. Once, Maybe if we're lucky, it'll put them through college. <laughs> and once, once they're tall enough, they'll start pouring beer. Excuse me. I just burped in the microphone. Nice. Imagine the uh, grand opening. <laughs> That's going to be pretty nuts. I just opened a brewery. I'm going to Disney World. You know, the, the Blood Angry Alice is on. I forgot to shave. I meant to shave today, man. Look all pretty for the camera. So. Ready? Yeah. Right, hey, I want to do it. All right. You want to do it now? Three, two, one, zero ignition. Ah! Lift off of Benatar 5 with left. We'll probably go through about 20 kegs today. Some big ass scissors. Hey, you know, stop drinking until afterwards. I don't need I don't need any crying. <laughs> Thanks for coming. This is awesome. Man. Thank you. I want a minotaur. I think I got angry. Oh, yeah, I did put you angry. That's why I'm uh, not a professional on that side. Excuse me. We're going to do a ribbon cutting uh, now. It's been five years in the making, and there's thousands of people to thank, and I'll try to list all of them. My wife, Jen. <laughs> To Richard, I mean, without him here, this place would never gotten built out. Cheers, Richard. Um, cheers on the plug. You know, you're, you're tasting his beer, and I'm biased, but it's an amazing beer. So, cheers to Russell, our uh, families, uh, you know, Joan, Mike, Kathy, Glenn, uh, Peter, Cassie, Josh, and Adrian aren't here, but, and our brother Mike. Also our contractor, Russell Gates, our architect, Chuck Henry. Mike Missle is over there. He was our lead broker. Dave, uh, he's our banker. Oh, yeah. With, um, coming into Loudoun County is probably the best decision we made after, probably a better decision than actually just doing a brewery. Thanks to Matt, our taproom manager. One last person, uh, Lisa, um, she advised us on the interior design. I think that's just, that, that should be, if I forgot anyone, I'm sorry. <laughs> One, two, three. Yay! 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 We had our ducks for a while, but they first appeared. Yeah, I'm glad the day came. What do you want to say? Well, isn't it great being here finally after four years of suffering? Five years. Five years of suffering. Five years of talking. Of talking, suffering, Praying. ups and downs, potential failures, oh. letdowns, and now fabulous success. Not yet, but it will be. It will be. You had too much beer already. Did you yeah. have sips? Half a sip and look at me. John.
I think the great thing about these guys is really their personality and their passion for the beer. And I feel like I've been with them through every step of the way. And I feel like they've allowed everyone to watch their journey through the YouTube videos. And I just feel like you can feel their passion and personality in this project. Our friend, uh, his son, overflowed the... That dude's an animal. He, he flushed Jamie and he just, just kept holding, he just kept holding the thing down. So, uh, Jamie Carson, man, you gotta teach your son better than that. <laughs> but next he's gonna take a dump in there. Oh God, man. You know, people walk in, they're like, whoa. Especially people who've been like, didn't know if we were ever gonna open, maybe lost belief in this, or maybe, you know, it's like, oh, they've been talking about opening Even, even when you signed the lease, it still took a long time, but like, yeah, I have no, I have no worries about uh, the quality of our tasting room and beer <laughs> and staff and staff. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap. Well, broke it. Thanks for following us. Hope you enjoyed the ride and come enjoy our beer. Was that good? Yeah. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Like, thanks for following us and joining us. Yeah, I can't say it. I'll never be able to say it again. <laughs> what did you say? Come drink our beer. Thanks, finally open. Thanks for sharing your journey on video. Now share it in the class. Yeah, uh, <laughs> in our next episode. You know, I'm happy with everything except for um, probably our brewer. I think uh, needs a uh, he needs an attitude adjustment. Oh, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and check us out next week.